today we're going to take a look at uh, isosceles triangles and some theorems related to isosceles triangles. Uh, first of all, let's review the definition of an isosceles triangle. We know that isosceles triangles have two congruent sides. Um, some textbooks say isosceles triangles have at least two congruent sides. However, if an isosceles triangle has three congruent sides, we know it's actually equilateral. Um, let's take a look at some parts of isosceles triangles. The, the side that is not congruent, we call the base, so segment BC here would be the base. Um, across from the base or opposite the base, we have what's called the vertex angle. So angle A here is a vertex angle. And the two congruent segments are called the legs. And then uh, we have the vertex angle here at the top, but then notice we have two angles here at the bottom of this triangle on either side of the base. Those are referred to as base angles. So the angle at B and the angle at C are both referred to as base angles. So now let's take a look at some uh, theorems and corollaries related to isosceles triangles. Um, the first theorem here says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, meaning we have an isosceles triangle, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. And we're going to take a look at a proof of this in a moment. Um, one way to show this is true is to, if you're using this in a, uh, one way to state that this is true in a theorem would be to show that if we have congruent sides, then that implies we have congruent angles. So the sides are congruent, the angles opposite those are congruent. Um, and this leads to three different corollaries here. The first one says um, that we have an equilateral triangle, and we know that if all the sides are equals, then all the angles are equal. So an equilateral triangle is also equiangular. And this means that uh, an equilateral triangle would have three 60 degree angles. 180 divided by three would give you 60 degree angles. And then we have another corollary related to isosceles triangles. Let me get an isosceles triangle drawn here so we can take a look at how this corollary works. So here's an isosceles triangle. And clearly we can see that these are our congruent sides, or our legs. And down here we have the base. It says the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is blank to the base at its blank. Well, let's draw this in here. So here is the bisector of the vertex angle. We can see that this angle here is being bisected. So these two angles are congruent. So the bisector of the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle is blank to the base. Well, it looks like there's a right angle here. And it actually does end up being a right angle. Um, these two triangles end up being congruent. And for them to be congruent and have these two angles summed in 180, these would both have to be right angles here. So it's it's perpendicular to the base at its, and we can see that this would be the midpoint since these two triangles will be congruent at its midpoint. So it's perpendicular to the base at its midpoint. Um, let's take a look at some other theorems and corollaries related to isosceles triangles before we actually go back and prove theorem 4.1. Um, this one says, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. So we start off with congruent angles, and that leads to congruent sides. So this could be the symbol you could use uh, if we were to use this theorem in a proof. So essentially, this is the converse of theorem 4.1. Um, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. And then down here, obviously, if all the angles are congruent, that means all the sides are congruent. So an equal angular triangle is also equilateral. So let's take a look now at a proof of uh, the theorem uh, 4.1, also referred to as the isosceles triangle theorem. So we're going to start with an isosceles triangle. And we can see that AB and AC are our congruent segments. And we want to prove that because these segments are congruent, the angles opposite them, the base angles, B and C, are congruent. 
And so we're going to start with our isosceles triangle. That's our given. And we're going to draw an auxiliary line. Let me draw an auxiliary line here. An auxiliary line that is going to bisect um, angle A. All right, let me fix that a little bit because it doesn't look like it's quite bisecting. So there we go. And uh, we need to label this down here with a D. So we have point D. So you might say, well, why is it that we can uh, make this, draw this line? Well, we know that uh, an angle will have a unique angle bisector based on the protractor postulate. Um, if an angle has a unique measure, then there's also going to be a unique half of that measure, um, a unique bisector. All right, so our next step in the proof would be definition of angle bisector. And if we're bisecting the angle here at A, we would know that these two angles are congruent. And that would be the next step of our proof to say that angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD by definition of angle bisector. Um, and then we have segment AD congruent to itself. Let's mark that on the diagram. Segment AD is congruent to itself. And what property is that? You probably already know the answer to that one. That's the reflexive property. And then we have triangle BAD congruent to triangle CAD. So these two triangles are congruent. And what is the reason they are congruent? Well, they would be congruent by a side angle side. And then the last step would be to say that, well, once these two triangles are congruent, we know that angles that match up are congruent, like angle B and angle C. So the reason angle B would be congruent to angle C would be by CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right. Uh, what I'd like you to do next is take a look at your handout and see if you can figure out the answer to these three questions. Figuring out the measure of angle x here on this isosceles triangle, figuring out the value of x here, you'll have to set up an equation, and then figuring out the length of this uh, segment here, um, you might want to figure out the missing angle first. So I'd like you to do those three questions and then uh, submit the answers to those three questions um, at uh, the tiny URL that goes with this screencast. Um, and we will continue to work with isosceles triangles in class tomorrow.